Hi students, my name is Samuel Chupu Emeka. In this video, we shall discuss Modular Arithmetic Modulo Concept Part 2. This presentation shall be on my website www.samuelchupuemeka.com. Our objectives. We shall solve expressions involving integers, modulo and integer. We shall also solve simple equations involving modulo. Then we shall compute and draw modulo tables involving addition and multiplication. Prerequisites. Before you continue with this video, it is highly recommended that you view the video on Modular Arithmetic Modular Concept Part 1. You can find this video by searching my YouTube channel or you can also browse my website to find the link to the video. So let's look at some basics here. Uh, when we have a, a residue B, that symbol is on your keyboard. Uh, I think it's a, it is the residue function. You can also use it to write absolute value functions. So when you have that A residue B, we actually pronounce it as A divides B or B divided by A. So when you have that A divides B to give you a, a question Q, remember R. We can write it that way as a fraction that a if A divides B, or if B is divided by A, you will have your result as the quotient whole number, remainder over A. So in this case, we, sh we can uh, formulate that B is equal to A times Q plus R. Let's look at an example. If 2 divides 7, right, 2 divides 7 will give you 3 remainder 1. And if you write it as a fraction, uh, the left-hand side is an improper fraction, and the right-hand side is a mixed number. So that tells you that 7 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 1. So our A is what we call the divisor. Our B is what we call the dividend. Q is known as the quotient. And R is known as the remainder. In this case, the example in the example we gave 7 is the dividend 2 is the divisor 3 is the quotient and 1 is the remainder in general we can now say that dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder this tells you that a b is equal to a times q plus r In all the work we do on modular arithmetic, uh, our remainder, we shall always make it a positive. Our quotient can be either a positive or a negative. Now, if our remainder turns out to be negative, then we have to do some manipulations. We have to uh, manipulate the quotient so that we can make our remainder to be positive. In most cases, as I have discovered while studying this, uh, all we need to do is we subtract one from the quotient and that will give us a positive remainder and we use that. So all the work we shall do on modular arithmetic, all the videos I've done so far on modular arithmetic, just we always want to have a positive remainder. Now if we have positives, there's no problem. If we have a positive divisor and a positive dividend, it is not a problem of course we will always get a positive quotient and a positive remainder. Just like we have 5 divided 12 gives us 2 remainder 2. Right? Because 12 is equal to 5 times 2, which is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. Remember, remember what we just said, that our dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder. Okay? So our... Uh, 12 is equal to uh, 5 times 2 plus 2. Okay, and you do this with, of course, PEMDAS, uh, order of operation. 
Please excuse my dear on Sally. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition and subtraction. Multiplication comes first before you add. Okay, so when we have a positive divisor and a positive dividend, it is not a problem. We are good. Okay, we have a positive quotient and a positive remainder. Now, the problem comes when we have a negative dividend. That is the problem. Like in example 2, 5 divide negative 9. That is the problem. So, ordinarily, if 5 divide negative 9, how, what, the first thing that comes to your mind is that, of course, the highest multiple of 5 and 9 is 1. So, it's negative 1, remainder negative 4. Of course, you have that negative 9 will give you 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. So that is the first thing that comes to your mind. And it is correct. Okay, don't get me wrong, it's correct. But in the context of modular arithmetic, it's not. Okay, we want to always get a positive remainder. So uh, 5 divide negative 9, uh, instead of it to be negative 1 remainder, negative 4, all we need to do is we subtract 1 from the quotient. So negative 1, negative 1 gives us negative 2. And of course, uh, we now say, okay, negative 10 plus 1 gives us negative 9. So we'll have it uh, as the second one rather than the first one. The first one gives us a negative remainder, which we do not want. But in the second one, when you have that, you see that the quotient is negative 1 in the first one. Subtract 1 from negative 1. It gives you negative 2. And then when you do 5 times negative 2, it gives you negative 10 plus 1 to give you negative 9. So it's still correct. Okay? So I've discovered actually that when you have this kind of situation, first of all, write it as it is the first way okay negative uh, 5 divide negative 9 to give you negative 1 remainder negative 4 then because the remainder is negative then just subtract 1 from the quotient you had which is negative 1 minus 1 gives you negative 2 and then of course 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 how would what will you do to negative 10 what will you add to negative 10 to give you negative 9 you add 1 hence the uh, remainder becomes 1. The equations involving modulo, positive values of x. Now, in this uh, case, let's look at the question, if x mod 5 is equal to 1, find x. Now, ordinarily you can do this mentally, okay? You can kind of do it mentally. This means, this means that what are those integer values of x? such that when you do modulo 5, it gives you 1. Ordinarily, this is what it means. Now, uh, I have worked on this, and this is what I came up with. I, have, I, I, I didn't see it in textbook, so I think I'll give myself the credit. Now, in this case, if you have something like this, x mod 5 equal to 1, if you don't want to do it mentally, what you can just do is you add 1 and 5, it gives you 6. Then you keep adding 5 to your results. Okay? So we have 6. 11, 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 plus 5 is 16. 16 plus 5 is 21. 21 plus 5 is 26. 26 plus 5 is 31. And it goes on and on. 36. 41. Okay? goes on and on and on. And how do you know whether this is correct? You can use the calculators on my website to check it or you can simply check it right from here okay uh, if you look at the uh, x mod 5 equal to 1 of course this is an equation so it means that your left hand side should be equal to your right hand side the left hand side is x mod 5 the right hand side is 1 so when we substitute 6 mod 5 6 mod 5 what is the highest multiple of 5 in 6 is 5 which is 1 times so 6 minus 5 is 1 yeah so if you view my first video you will understand what I just said now so 6 mod 5 gives you 1 11 mod 5 
gives you 1. 16 mod 5 gives you 1. 21 mod 5 gives you 1. So that is it. The same way you do it for every one of them. X mod 5 to give you 3. You just add 3 and 5 gives you 8. Then you keep adding 5 to your results. So we have 8, 13, 18, 23, uh, 28, and so on and so forth. 8 mod 5 gives you 3. 13 mod 5 gives you 3. 18 mod 5 gives you 3. 23 mod 5 gives you 3. 28 mod 5 gives you 3. And so on and so forth. Now, let's look at the negative values of x. Again, here, I came up with this. So I'll give myself the credit. I didn't get it from textbook. I don't know whether it's from text uh, is in the textbook but uh, this is what I came up assuming you have x mod 5 to be equal to 1 find x in this case we want your x to be the negative values of x so uh, this means what are those negative integers that when you do mod 5 it gives you 1 okay so the way I the way I do it is, I will come and say, okay, subtract 5 from 1. You know, subtract 5 from 1. Some folks make the mistake of doing 5 minus 1 instead. No. You read it like this, subtract 5 from 1. So 1 is there, then you subtract 5 from 8. Okay? So one mi this means 1 minus 5. 1 minus 5 gives you negative 4. And then you keep subtracting 5 from your result. So, negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus 5 is negative 14. Negative 14 minus 5 is negative 19. Negative 19 minus 5 is negative 24. Negative 24 minus 5 is negative 29. And how do you check it? Okay, now that is set notation. Just like we wrote here, this is set notation for the positive values. You know, when you have so many results like that, it is good that you put it in set notation so that's why I, I did it uh, in this case for the negative values you see I had to uh, now some of you if you look at the positive values you see it goes on and on and on the uh, the ellipsis ellipsis the, those three dots now if because it goes on and on and on to the positive infinity now if you look at the negative uh, if you look at the negative uh, values, you see it kind of goes from the negative infinity. Because this is the way you have it on a number line. Okay, negative 29 is less than negative 24. Negative 24 is less than negative 19. Negative 19 is less than negative 14. Negative 14 is less than negative 9. Negative 9 is less than negative 4. So that was why I did it. And if you want to combine all these, you know, you, know you, you cannot combine the negative and the positive as a set notation. So what you just have to do is you get this set notation right here and you uh, the numbers and you just add it here. So you have ellipsis, negative 29, negative 24, and it goes and goes and goes and stops at negative 4. Then you put a comma and you start from 6 and continue. And you put these ellipses to uh, to now get all of them okay so that is the way you do it to get the negative values of X as well so usually when they ask you this X mod 5 equal to 1 you have to consider both the positive values of X and the negative values of X you have to consider it and you have to uh, put it in it's good to put it in set notation as I just explained the same thing when you have the x mod 5 equal to 3 you subtract 5 from 3 it gives you negative 2 and then you keep subtracting 5 if you keep subtracting 5 you get all those values all right now let's look at the modular 5 addition table uh, this is pretty easy because it deals with only the positive integers so I'll just explain about three cases like we have 2 plus 3 2 plus 3 is 5 right but you cannot get 5 in mod 5 remember this is wrapping around 
you know it wraps around so uh when it stops uh when it when it reaches five it continues from zero so a model of five our five is zero you know five divided by five is one remainder zero so it is zero uh please view that view the first video that i did so that you have a better understanding of this if you have four plus four is eight eight mod five will give you three because it's one remainder three if you have a two plus uh, two is four four mod five is still four that's why you have four then the next one is mod five modulo five multiplication table of course if you have two times four is eight eight mod five is three because uh, uh, eight mod five is one remainder three which is uh, the modulus eight mod five is three four times three is twelve twelve mod five is two uh, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 mod 5, you have 1. Because you have 3 remainder 1. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 1, 16. So, uh, thank you so much for listening to this video. Uh, there are several calculators on my site that you can use on to solve modular and uh, modular arithmetic. To solve questions on modular arithmetic. Thank you for listening to this video. And you have a great day.